IDS 400 Diversity Final by Erica Hughes. The United States Navy has been around for 239 years. It was established in 1775. Its birthday is October 13, 1775. It's been involved in more than 10 major wars and countless battles in efforts to bring security, democracy, and peace and prosperity to the American people, but not just the American people, people all over the world. After 239 years, the Navy could still use more diversity. reputation. Stick around, kids. What can you lose? While we beat out a short recitation. A Navy Blues. It's got out-of-this-world kind of music. Songs to start you tapping your shoe. And a cast that's super terrific. In Navy Blues. Last, say there's a fleet foot. They're the best you've seen by miles. Take our word it's Seldom we give it, it will lay you out in the aisles. If I know anything about aisles. Chuck full of chuck, it's a riot. The show with a million smiles. Bring on those navy blues. Here they come, those navy blues. Faces all are shy. Step aside for the pride of the navy. For the Navy, the chores and mine. Women in the Navy. When established, the Navy had no female officers or enlisted female service members. Females weren't even accepted into the Navy until 1917. They were allowed in the Navy at, in 1917, but they were only allowed to serve as yeomen at first. They called them yeomanettes, which is like a feminine take on being a yeoman. And a yeoman is a person that does... Even today, it does personnel service records, keeps paperwork in order. On March 19, 1917, the Bureau of Naval Navigation sent letters to commanders of Navy districts telling them that they had to recruit women into the Naval Coast Defense Reserve. And that's basically women who sit on the shore and take messages back from ships that are at sea or shore patrols. They were used as radio operators, which are people who talk on walkie-talkies, stenographers, which are the same thing, nurses um, in the medical facilities, messengers, chauffeurs for men, of course, and just all-out operators. They were used in the industrial line, too. Some of them were used as electricians. Um, radio operators, they fixed the walkie-talkies that they, they worked on. And sometimes they just filled spots that they could do the job. But they were all designated as yeoman, which is still a personnel service person. Here's a side note about the women that were serving. Women weren't allowed to wear pants in the Navy. Even though in movies they, they show them wearing pants and walking around on these tropical bases and trousers, they were never allowed to wear pants in uniform. It was seen as improper for women to wear anything other than long skirts, dresses, and nylons. They were given extra money to pay for their uniform articles, but they were restricted from doing their jobs in pants. So could you imagine working in a factory and you're an electrician and you have to hike your skirt around your ankles so that you don't get it caught on moving rotary machinery? Though women were allowed to serve with restrictions, they had to be white women. There were no non-white women serving in the armed forces at the time that women were allowed inside of the armed forces. The first woman to serve in the Navy was Loretta Perfectus Walsh. She joined at age 20 in March of 1917. She was a pioneer for many women who came after her. African American men in the Navy. African American men were allowed to serve to some capacity from the establishment of the Navy. There's no actual record of when and how African American men served the United States Navy before the 20th century. Perhaps they were indentured servants, but there's no real records of them. 
in the Congressional Archives. African American men are listed as deckhands, not sailors, and never by name. They are always listed by numbers, like in the prison system, but they were never listed by names. African American men were not allowed to hold the title of officer until 1944, where 13 black men were awarded the rank of Chief Warrant Officer. They were called the Golden 13. Here's a side note about the Navy and their history with African slave trade. The Navy had an African slave trade patrol. It was established in 1820 and disbanded in 1861. There were only a few ships in this patrol, and they only patrolled waters around West Africa, South America, and Cuban areas. And they wanted to disembark enslavement, enslavement in those areas because they felt that the slavery in those particular areas brought human misery to America, to the colonies, to the established American colonies. By the start of the Civil War, more than 100 suspected slavers were captured and imprisoned and then later jailed. Hispanic Men in the Navy Hispanic men or men of Hispanic descent were already in the military serving in ranks as high as Admiral, such as Admiral Farragut, who lived from 1801 to 1870. So that was quite a while ago and very close to the inception of the Navy, he was already serving a pretty high rank. The Navy prides itself on being a diverse organization. They tell you that anyone can attain leadership, anyone can join within standards, yet there are only 69,750 female sailors. And of these sailors, 83% of them are enlisted, 17% of them are officers. Females are selected far less for officer programs because they are restricted due to biological reasons and more than men and are given restrictions before training even starts. Some of these restrictions can be a history of abortions, cosmetic surgery, the amount of children they have. The Navy has a history of holding females back. Biologically, women are held back from some ships. Yes, that's true. There are still ships that do not allow for women in their birthings. Sometimes they'll allow for officer females and officer birthings, but not regular enlisted women in the enlisted birthings because they just don't have the birthing space for women and only women. Biologically, women are held back from certain programs based on their biological makeup, based on the fact that they are women. There are subs that allow for women, there are major ships that allow for women, and small ships that allow for women, but those are, there are still some ships that just will not make a female birthing because of manning, because of numbers, because women make up such a small amount of personnel in the Navy. Though the number of all-male ships have dropped substantially, there are a lot more ships that allow for females, and there are some all-male ships that do have female birthings now. We are still in an age where there are ships that will not allow for women, and there are no ships that will not allow for men. So we still have uh, some ways to go, maybe. We still have some ways to go. Women and minorities in power. Women and minorities in power bring something different to the table. There would be a different train of thought. Of course, we are all equal and we are all the same, but women think differently than men and different races of people think different from different races of people. It's just a fact. With a collective, diverse wardroom, a collective diverse chief's mess, a collective diverse senior enlisted organization, there could be a wealth of knowledge and creativity passed around. We could learn so much from each other if we were only given the chance to take people out of their comfort zones and let the women and the minorities ascend as often 
and as frequently as the majority white male species does. My approach. My approach today was to really take a deep dive into diversity and really pull out my beliefs on what diversity is and who diversity affects. And hopefully from what I've learned today, I can help implement programs that will ensure that diversity training is available to all service members. Now diversity training is available in terms of a CBT and that's called computer-based training where you sit in front of a computer and you select C and you test out of it and you really don't get much out of it. It's called general military training. You do it once a month and diversity I think is once a year and I don't think anyone's really learning anything. So perhaps if we really hone in on the diversity program and we stop pretending like it's not as important as suicide awareness or sexual assault prevention and response and we give it the same respect we may see more diversity in the Navy. I would, I would also like to see ascension programs for women and minorities into programs dominated by males, white males specifically. And I'm not asking for affirmative action in any way. What I'm saying is that these jobs that are dominated by these males are selected. They are boarded, which means a group of like-minded individuals sit down and ask questions to all people that qualify for the position and then select another like-minded individual and they are like-minded, they look alike, they sound alike, and they do alike. Therefore, you see little diversity in powers of position. I'd also like for the Navy to reassess female birthing standards. It's getting ridiculous. On a ship of 300 personnel, you maybe have 110 females, officers, and enlisted, and you have birthings that could probably house 90 females, and in these two birthings, because there's only gonna be two, there are four bathroom stalls and two showers between the two of them. I think female birthing standards have taken a big hit since women have become shipboard sailors. And something should be done about it. I mean, someone should do something about it. And all the women in power, they began in power. All the women in power started off as officers. So they don't really understand what it's like to be an enlisted female in a female birthing because officer females live in staterooms. Also, I think that all naval vessels should be capable of housing females no matter what they are, no matter if they're torpedo retrievers or minesweepers. Subs, yes, they have females, but not all of them have females. And some of the destroyers, even though they can house 300 personnel, don't have any female birthings. Frigates still can't house females unless they're officers and there can't be more than two on board. Unless there is a master chief and a seal, then there could be four females on board a frigate. And I think that's just ridiculous. targeted population. My targeted population is military leadership and the military leadership committee that works through the Naval Personnel Command. That could be the CNO, any of the high-ranking military officials that work at DSIA. I would like for them to really look into diversity into the Navy. You always see these programs and you hear about the training and then you walk into one of the training and they hand you a URL and a password and tell you to do a, a CBT and turn it in at the end of the day or you can't go home. The Navy can do better and it should do better. I would also like to target all the females in the Navy because I believe that Naval females should want better for themselves. I think that you come into this organization and you look around and you just feel so lucky to be a part of it and you feel so lucky that being a woman isn't holding you back and you forget that there are restrictions here. There are restrictions in the Navy and they do count and they do hold you back. And just because you see one in two females ascend every five to six years to a high ranking position doesn't mean that we're next in line. These are very sporadic occurrences 
and they don't seem like they are because they're celebrated so highly and they're written all over the boards and it makes you feel like oh yes that could be me one day and you forget that we're restricted and we're held back because we're not asking for more we look at our birthings and we don't say anything we say oh well the male birthing could be worse than ours and if we forget that they have 23 stalls in their bathrooms and we have four between 110 females so my targeted population are the people that can do something about it it is military leadership and it, it is the women in the military and the minorities in the military it's everyone because we can all do something to change this organization and make it better and make it diverse creating a more cohesive unit and a better navy altogether. and these are my references